welcome back to Aim Small. I'm your slightly lunatic presenter called Gert. And today we're looking at electronic triggers versus mechanical triggers. Or mechanical guns versus electronic guns. So sit back, relax, let's get into it. Welcome back to Aim Small. Today I'm tackling a different conundrum. But a lacquer conundrum. And this, kudos to the manufacturers out there for the innovation that you've showed in the last couple of years with air rifles specifically. Today I'm tackling the issue between do I choose a mechanical air rifle or an electronic air rifle? And the two guns I've got on display today is the BRK Ghost and I've got the Daystate Pulsar in the, in the plastic stock. I don't know what else to call that. And um, they're basically the same price. So this should be a lot fairer comparison than usual when we get to that. And I'm going to look at a couple of items in that regard. So this is not a pure gun comparison. This is to look at the differences from a mechanical gun to an electronic gun. All right, so first and foremost, key, key to this whole scenario is the nanometer. With the BRK Ghost, it is a normal lacquer rubbish nanometer. It's not very accurate. All right, the same with the Huma Reg uh, meter on this side. Yes, it's a Huma, it's a lot more accurate, but you can't fine tune it necessarily. Whereas with the latest electronic guns, and I'm now referring to the Delta Wolf and the Alpha Wolf and all those other wolves out there, you can actually set the regulator electronically as well. The Day State Pulsar that I've got, you can't. You've got three power settings. So this is a very, very basic gun. And that also brings us to point number two, and that is adjustability. So with the mechanical guns, you, in general, you have a lot more adjustability. And again, I'm not referring to the Alpha Wolf and the Delta Wolf. I'm looking at the Pulsar specifically. So the Pulsar has got three settings, medium, low and high power. And that is the sum total of your flexibility regarding that. To do any adjustments to that, you actually need special equipment and you need to re reprogram the motherboard in that regard. So from a adjustability perspective, don't. It's as simple as that. But I found with my 30 foot pound gun, I only need three adjustabilities. If I want to shoot the 18 grainers, go up to maximum power. When I want to shoot the 15.89 grainers, I go to medium power and they are super, super accurate there, running at 870 feet per second, and it's an absolute laser at that speed. So I don't need the adjustability. I'm not talking about slugs today, I'm purely gonna stick to pallets throughout today. Okay, so those are the couple of things. From a adjustability perspective, I think the Ghost is just a phenomenal gun. You've got 20 power settings in here, you can adjust the regulator up, down, whatever you want every which way you want to. So from a adjustability perspective, the mechanical gun wins hands down. But not all mechanical guns are as sophisticated as the Ghost, but in this price range, they are. Okay. Second thing that is a big, big win for the mechanical guns is you don't have battery issues. They can't run flat out in the field. Okay, so from a mechanical point of view, supposedly less that can go wrong in that regard. From a trigger perspective, this is where the big popo hits the fan. Mechanical trigger, yes, you need to manually adjust it. With the electronic trigger, you can manually adjust it finer, but you don't have to. That trigger out of the box is an absolute beaut. And that's the big difference between these electronic guns versus mechanical. The biggest issue is the trigger and everything around the trigger. Okay, so with that said, this gun out of the box, the trigger was not all that great. Uh, Rific might be a better word. It was not that great. So I had to do a lot of fine adjustments to the trigger and it's still not where I want it. It's not a match great trigger as per se. Whereas with the day state, it is an absolute beaut of a trigger. You barely touch that trigger. And the reason I keep on hammering on the trigger is that trigger pull affects your stability. It affects your follow through and your shot as well. It affects accuracy. It affects everything that you shoot with. If you've got two guns next to each other, one with a mechanical trigger, one with an electronic trigger, chances are that the electronic trigger will win hands down every single time for smoothness. There's no additional springs. There's no recoil effectively. 
okay, depending on the power settings that you've got in the gun, but it's a solenoid versus a mechanical spring and all the delays that you get in that, specifically with ball pumps. So ball pumps in general, you've got a lever action wave to the back, so there's a linkage between the two, and that linkage delays the trigger pull. Now, if you're shooting bench, not that big a difference, although you want the lightest possible trigger ever for bench. Whenever out in the field, when you do a bit of hunting, you don't ha always have the opportunity to go and set up a bench for your hunting. It's on the fly. You need to shoot from out of the position that you are in, and a lot of the time you'll have some kneelers and some standing shots there. In that regard, your trigger pull is cardinal. Because of us being normal mortal humans, we tend to have a little bit of a bevarasiki, English word for moving all over the show. Bevarasi, Afrikaans, moving all over the show. So in that, your trigger pull is cardinal because once you're on the target, you don't want to have to time your shot plus aim your shot. The ideal position is just to aim, pull trigger, and it goes. You don't have to go figure eights all over the target or beaver. So from that perspective, the Daystate Pulsar wins hands down. Fastest trigger, direct access, no linkage in between. It's electronic, it is super, super fast, and it's super, super smooth. And the only way to demonstrate that is to actually put both guns down on the, on the bipods, with a beanbag in the back, put the scope cam on for you guys, and then do normal trigger pulls to see what is the recoil and also what is the action out of that. So without further ado, let's jump into that exercise. At normal speed, the ghost looks quite fine, but if you slow it down to 10% of speed, you can actually see that after the trigger is pulled, the point of aim is way, way, way to the left. Now let's compare that with the day state electronic trigger where right after the trigger pull the point of aim is immediately back on the target it's these small things that makes a massive difference when we go shooting let's look at the quick summary which one of these two would i prefer looking at the pros and cons of both the electronic trigger wins hands down That's all, folks.